Wonderful. Tell me a little bit about where the music comes from and about your name, about the band. Thank you for having us at uh, MATV today. <coughs> we are called Amoud. Amoud is uh, A-M-O-U-D, which is an Amazir term. Amazir is the right term for the word Berber and uh, referred to as 
uh, the, actually uh, the, the Berbers, we call them Imaziren, and they are the indigenous people of North Africa. Instead of calling them Berbers, we call them Imaziren, and this music that you just heard is music of the Amazir people, or Imaziren, and uh, it takes, uh, this type of music takes from uh, the poetry that the uh, Imaziren uh, or Amazir legends have left for us. And um, the, uh, the topics are about love, nature, and solidarity. Yes, thank you. So, so uh, yes, please. Thank you. And um, what are your names? My name is Adi, and we've got here Hussein on the banjo. We've got Tayeb on the drums and the vocal, also Hassan on the djembe and the vocal. And we've got Nordin on the bendir. We call it in Tamazir, Alun. 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 Now, I want to ask you one other question. Um, the, does the music differ from place to place where you come from? Um, yes, indeed. Uh, when we say the, the Imaziren, we're referring to the uh, North African community from the Canary Island all the way to Egypt. That's the land of Imaziren, referred to as North Africa. We, the natives or the indigenous, we call it Samazra. And yes, the music is different from one region to other. And this style of music that we just played uh, is uh, taken from southwestern Morocco. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. And thank you. we'll enjoy another song. Thank you.
Hello, my name is Osa Schwab. I'm here at MATV's Open House Showcase, and we're back in Studio B, and I'm with two very special people. I'm here with Adi Wadero and Bonnie Blanchard, and we just heard a delightful section of music, and I'm going to let Adi tell a little bit more about what we just heard. Uh, good evening, uh, my name is Adi Wadiro, um, from uh, Nat an indigenous of uh, North Africa, especially from Morocco. Uh, the music we heard today is uh, Amazir music, and uh, particularly from southwestern Morocco today. And uh, it is, uh, the words are taken from, uh, like I mentioned before, from poetry that uh, Amazir have written before. and. Um, uh, the, the topics are mainly nature, uh, love, uh, solidarity, and uh, this type of music that we played now, you would hear it in South uh, Western Morocco uh, during special events like weddings and uh, other gatherings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm very curious, um, how far back do you know 
the poetry goes. I mean, what is the earliest um, poetry that you know of? Um, we can't really tell beca because uh, the Amazigh history is very deep. Mm. Um, only lots of people associate Morocco or North Africa with the Arab world right. or the Muslim world. Mm -hmm. um, actually, the Amazigh uh, history is d and culture are both deeper, much deeper than uh, the Arab or the Muslim um, culture there. Deeper as in um, it goes further Even back. further beyond the yeah. 7th century. Wow. Yes. So uh, that's how old, uh, actually, it's, uh, we just celebrated our Amazigh New Year, which dates uh, our anniversary, uh, 2,965 anniversary. 2,965. And that's just an anniversary uh, of uh, uh, within the um, Amazigh history. And uh, so the poetry is very, very old. Mm -hmm. um, lots of it uh, was uh, actually almost all of it was just orally passed down mm -hmm. uh, from uh, great great parents to uh, mm -hmm. the current generation uh, because people did not write before. Mm -hmm. Or if they were wrote, many of these, uh, these uh, writings got lost if they were written on leather, mm -hmm. for example, or carved on wood or something. Those materials uh, would have been eaten by nature. Mm -hmm. uh, what's mm -hmm. left basically is the carvings like the rock art, mm -hmm. for example, or paintings like inside of caves that we would see or find uh, in some parts of North Africa mm -hmm. uh, in the Amazigh land. Is there still um, action, activity to, res to uh, celebrate the culture, let's say in the schools, do the kids learn um, the poetry and, and sort of the cultural aspects of their <coughs> background? Um, until recently, it has always been oral, mm. right? Um, in fact, uh, Morocco is actually the first nation in North Africa to recognize Tamazight as a language, mm -hmm. as an official and national language, and it is in the constitution. So that gives, um, that revives basically, or gives a chance for to this culture to be, um, to flourish again. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, it's in school and gradually um, spread in because um, you can't uh, cover the whole country uh, right away because you need to prepare more teachers. And it's happening in Morocco today. That's good to hear because mm -hmm. I know many indigenous people uh, for many, many years there was quiet about culture. And so for many of them, it's starting to emerge that this is so important to celebrate that, their culture. And that's exactly what's happened in, in North Africa yeah. is that since the seventh century, basically our culture was suppressed. Mm. So we could not teach it, we could not um, really pass it uh, down through writing mm -hmm. but or in school because it was never uh, mm -hmm. allowed right. until um, today uh, mm -hmm. the, cu the, the current king of uh, Morocco mm -hmm. um, is uh, a brave man and he actually um, the w is the first leader actually to allow this to happen in North Africa. I am mm -hmm. so happy to hear that. Mm -hmm. So I know that you have a wonderful store that uh, where you sell uh, goods from Morocco, uh, Moroccan caravan, or oh no, that and and you also that's right. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's the name right. of it. And you also uh, uh, facilitate these wonderful tours in Morocco. Tell me a little bit about uh, those tours. Well, the the business is called the Moroccan caravan, right? Mm -hmm. um, it uh, started uh, with the appreciation, first of all, for the arts, because mm -hmm. I grew up in a household uh, where there was always a loom active. Ah. So my sisters and my mother always wove. So I, had, I grew up with that appreciation for the arts. Mm -hmm. And that's actually how I started Moroccan Caravan on the crafts side. Selling their goods? Selling their creations? Selling the textiles, yes. Ah. And then I started designing other items like lamps and other things. Uh, so the uh, Moroccan caravan today has a varieties of, uh, of uh, uh, selections of uh, items mm -hmm. and the crafts. Uh, that's on one side, but uh, on the other side, the uh, Moroccan caravan also organizes and leads uh, cultural trips mm -hmm. to Morocco, mm -hmm. only Morocco, mm -hmm. where we take people and uh, bring them or uh, bring them deep into the culture as much as possible and help them um, learn about that culture and share with them. Wonderful. And mm. I know we have 
a wonderful participant of one of those tours, oh. Bonnie. Yes, it did. So tell me, uh, you went in October of we last went, year? We went in October. October. There, was, there was a group of eight of us, and it was it was being transported into another time zone on this planet of 2,000 years. And the best, one of the best times of the trip was visiting Adi's hometown, mm. his Mezgita, where the hospitality of all the people were there. And you just don't find this in your regular touring trips. And this is mm -hmm. deep in the desert. Mm -hmm. And the people were so wonderful, and the costumes, and the generosity, and mm -hmm. just the I don't know, I just felt like I, I could have left the key in my door at home and stayed, <laughs> you know? And he was right moved about the in. loom, <coughs> moved in, and I did help build this family's home, and there was wow. a loom in this workroom, and they were building rugs, and a lot of the crafts that they make there, ID brings back to his store and sells them, and it's to help the women in their craft and keep up the culture in their country. Mm -hmm. And that was just one of the many beautiful things that I got to experience in addition to the magic food, and we all ate so wonderfully healthy. Mm. And, uh, and of course, the, my magic camel trip. And uh, <laughs> my camel named Sam, and two and a half. Sam, you named Sam. Sam. Or Sam. <laughs> 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 two and a half hours out to the desert for dinner. How magic can that be? So you know, so. How many hours a day would you ride on the camels? Or, or, was well, or did that depend? It depended. Well, two, mm. two and a half hours to dinner. Okay. And, then <laughs> and then we got there, we had this wonderful dinner on a bed of carpets in the middle of the desert, and then this wine and with food and was prepared, and then later on, as it got dark, the Gnawans came, the local neighborhood musicians came by and played the drums and the music, and it was magic, and who could go to sleep? Mm -hmm. So where did you sleep? Where did I sleep? I slept in a tent, <laughs> and this beautiful... <laughs> so it's, it's, it's a nomadic tent. It's, it's a nomadic, actually it's a hand woven. It's a hand woven tent. Wow. Yeah, that's the style. And all these beautiful the rugs music. were on the sand, and it had, if you had to go up and you'd get up in the middle of the night, you had this <laughs> carpet, magic carpet, and with a beautiful bra brass basin, and you found your way back on this carpet to your little tent. And you'd get up, and it was a very different trip going back because daylight and going backwards on the, not backwards on the camel, but going back to breakfast at some before sunrise <laughs> was a very different experience. And no, we didn't go backwards on the camel. But it was just a, another two and a half hour ride into, into just, you know, it's 2,000 so years. So aside from all the wonderful sensual um, aspects, and w did you feel like it shifted something in you, changed something in you, or deepened something in you? Very much so, because we're living in, in, amidst what we're going through right now in this country. And when you go there and see these wonderful people who have nothing but smiles on their faces, mm -hmm. and they have wizened little faces because they're out doing the daily work of minding the soil and the animals and mm -hmm. being friendly, and just in the little squares and the medinas that we visit, everybody is friendly and open, and nobody's concerned about their Yves Saint Laurent shoes or latest L'Oreal <laughs> lipstick. <laughs> and, uh, and, and so, <laughs> well, but it was just, and all the markets and all the things are uh -huh. on the back. It was just like magic. I could have, as I keep saying, I could have moved in mm -hmm. any one of them. And it was, it, you know, I was transported back to another lifetime. So I'll end with this <coughs> question. Um, Adi, as you prepare these um, journeys for people, what do you hope um, will happen for them? I mean, something similar as with Bonnie. Of course, she came with a completely open and curious mind. But what do you hope for by these tours? <coughs> well, first of all, when somebody comes to me to ask uh, for to join a trip mm -hmm. or to organize a trip for them, for their organization or for mm -hmm. their group, basically, if it's just friends and family, um, I always ask them, actually, what's your interest? What are you looking for? That's nice. So that I know exactly what they are looking for. Mm -hmm. And then um, it's that interest that they are looking for plus the general uh, culture of Morocco and my goal from the whole thing is to educate them is mm -hmm. to share with them something authentic mm -hmm. and I'm not looking at it as only doing trips as business mm -hmm. but I do strongly believe that I'm actually bringing a thread from this side to the other side mm -hmm. and connecting it there and then building bridges mm -hmm. and uh, bridges um, I mean symbolic bridges here yes where we're um, giving a chance to, uh, to, to people to gain better understanding. Mm -hmm. And uh, if there is better understanding, then I think uh, we will have 
lots of uh, issues solved. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think I found through my experience that a lot of people actually uh, did not know much about yeah. that part of the world. Mm -hmm. And they will give you this true story. I had a woman who called me on the phone. She said, I want to go to Morocco, but I'm worried about one thing. Mm -hmm. I told her, what is it? She said, I'm worried about white slavery. Mm. I told her, you're joking, right? She said, no, <laughs> oh I'm not. I told her, we better be joking. Story short, she ended up um, going. Mm -hmm. And later on, she said that it was a mind-opening uh, opportunity for her. So that trip basically changed her life. That's amazing. Because she was believing, she was carrying certain myths mm -hmm. or in her brain and uh, she, uh, certain beliefs. And when she went on that trip, she, to she found totally different thing. Um, and uh, that was uh, life changing for that her, she said. That is such mm -hmm. an amazing thing. I, I so appreciate that you're doing that. I mean, I love the fact that we're making webs across the world. And right. uh, so this, uh, it's been so lovely speaking with you. I think we're Thank continuing you. our journey in Morocco uh, now with a little bit of different music, perhaps from a different region. And we're going to hear Nashat.